Good morning, everyone. I think we're getting ready to start now. I am Niels. I'll him to talk about stretch and moving forward. Today, I'll talk about the Jess release, which we already did. I'll be talking about some important dates for the stretch release, and then some of the changes we hope to implement before the stretch release. That would be some process changes, some new ideas, and other crazy things. And then it goes without mention, there's a GCC transition, which I will briefly end up talking a bit about. So, the JC release. So the good things, there are a couple of things that work really well for us, auto removals again being one of them, um, among other things. We're also very happy that many of you provided sensible patches that were ready to go into Jesse as is, or with very few remarks, and that you were very careful with what you proposed. Excellent. Um, and certainly the freeze was vastly better and shorter than what we had for Weezy, which is definitely a great plus. There are also a couple of items we can improve, on the other hand. Pre-approvals, we get way too many of those, and they are extra work for us. We still get a lot of uploads with unrelated changes, which cause us to spend extra time reviewing them, um, extra time talking to people, saying, we can't have that change, you know, please revert it. And we're still not happy with the freeze length, which I guess goes for most of you as well. The pre-approvals is somewhat a double-edged sword for us. On one hand, we're happy that you're careful, being extra careful. Um, on the other hand, it's an extra round trip for us. So when you upload a pre-approval, or when you do a pre-approval, you say, can I upload this? We say yes, we review it once. Then you upload it, we end up reviewing it again. Um, then approve it. So when you go, Lots of those, you end up doing lots of extra work for a lot of trivial changes. So, for people that are sensible, this is actually harmful us, for us to get too many pre approvals. On the other hand, if you're not sensible, we want the pre approvals rather than blind uploads. We're still looking for ways of improving this workflow so we can avoid either the extra round trip or somehow make people more confident in simple changes, sensible changes, and without getting too many nonsensible changes. We will, one of the things we aren't working on is reverting the freeze policy for stretch, so become more clear what is okay and what is not. That's what we hope at least. Um, but we will not ever end up with an exhaustive list of this is definitely okay. We might have a list of this is definitely not, not okay, but it will never be exhaustive. We're moving on to unrelated changes now. And um, this is some of the things we hear, paraphrased. So, like, it's a leaf package. It cannot possibly break other things. It can. It has happened, and it will happen again. Or it ends up breaking itself, in which case it's not really helpful for us either. Um, we also see people uploading a new upstream release or something with a lot of extra changes, and we say, this is not really working for us. And they say, but if I have to cherry pick it or revert it, it'll be a lot of extra work for me. You should totally just ignore this thing. It just doesn't work for us either. It's pushing work onto us, um, which we'll come back to in a moment is somewhat of a problem. And there's also the part where the changes are irrelevant, harmless, and should make a difference. The sad truth of this, sometimes they do. And when they do, we discover them later than we want to. So that's why we insist on reviewing everything. Um, it's extra work, yes. <coughs> and when we ask people to revert things, undo things, or cherry pick things to re-upload with less, they're usually not very inclined to do it. I understand it's extra work for you as well, but we need that. We need to be able to make reverts cheaper, to make it be less work. So it works for you and for us. Um, also, again, please don't upload new upstream releases 
without a pre-approval, which goes back to the part of trying not to do many, so many things that need pre-approvals because they are a lot of work for us. And yes, we don't like to say no. It is often easier for us to say yes to something than it is to say no, because saying no means you have to argue two or three mails before people get no is no. Um, or fuzzy purple unicorn, I think it's called now. So if you want to help, and I'll, we would like you to help, please cherry pick changes. And for some unavoidable craft like when we have these auto-regenerated files, we have translations, please use filter diff. Send us a filter diff one and tell us what you filter diffed and how. We will still see the unfiltered content when we check the package, but at least the first screening, which is this one you want, will go faster. So, on this thing with moving, pushing more work onto us, the problem is you're saving time by putting more work on us, means that if enough people do that, the entire project will end up overloading us, so all the other changes will get stuck behind yours. And it's just, it's harmful for the release process, really. If you want things faster, make this work for us. So, for it's too long, we are looking into doing RC releases somehow, doing pre-releases after the freeze but before we are ready to do a full release, which means we can do more testing, hopefully, as well. Um, it also might give us better benchmarks of how well the release is actually going. We start looking just at RC box, which is, of course, a useful metric, but not the only one. Um, we will also do some changes to the freeze, and as mentioned before, the freeze policy. I'll get back to the freeze in a moment with the dates, uh, but there's some one thing else we can do. I'd like you to consider the following little question. What happens if 2% of all packages are, are not quite ready when the freeze happens? Any takers? <laughs> are you ready? Uh, it's a bit, oh well. Uh, yeah, so he said something about deferring it to the first point release, if I understood correctly. Anyway, my answer is the project will file at least 500 unblocked requests. That is 2% of the entire archive right now, looking at source packages. Uh, and that is a minimum number. Sometimes we need multiple uploads to get things right. D package, system D, among others apt as well, had numerous uploads during Jitsi freeze. It is actually a very best case, we only see 500 unblocked requests in this case. And then the question is, will this burn out the release team? Yes, it will. Will this make the freeze longer? Yes, it will. So again, have things ready when we freeze. And that's the part where I need you to help us. The release team cannot have everything ready because there's simply too many packages for five to 10 people to actually get ready at the same time. We need you to help us here. And that even means fixing packages you don't maintain. This is a very helpful thing because we can't really help you when you get two months in the freeze and say, why did you remove this package which I really need, but was RC buggy for three months, and I didn't bother fixing. We can't help you then. Fix it before. Then we can help you. Now, on to something a little more exciting, the future. We will be talking a bit about the important dates for stretch. Now, you should do cool stuff for Stretch. This is the current timeline. It's for me now. There will be a transition I'll talk about later. 
which you should keep in mind, but after that, go ahead and do cool stuff. Then, in a year from now, that'll be in the summer, 2016, you should remember this is this thing called the freeze coming up, and you should have your things ready for that. That's when you start. We move on to the transition fee freeze during the 5th of September, which is <coughs> about half to a month after uh, DEPCON 16. I don't remember the exact dates, but a couple of weeks after that. After the transition freeze, we will have two months where we will not accept any new transitions, but we will have a soft freeze at the 5th of November, which you might remember. And of course, there is the 5th of December where we will start the actual full freeze. I'll come into the difference between these three freezes in a moment. And as you know, you have a year to go bananas to some extent and develop new stuff. The transition freeze means we'll not be doing transitions anymore. We hope to be finished with all the transitions by then, but more likely we will this will be the cutoff point for accepting new transitions. Um, we would also like to uh, request people to start doing fails to build from source testing against testing at this point, so we can weed out a lot of the fails to build from source problems then. The soft freeze, which was the 5th of November, this is the cutoff point for new packages. After this package, if after this date, we will not accept new packages into testing. This is regardless of whether or not they have previously been in testing or not. So if they're removed, they're now staying out and requires manual intervention to get them back in. So this is the point where auto removals no longer migrate back automatically when you fix it after being auto removed. And finally, the freeze is, as you mostly know it, all changes to testing will require manual review. And then there will be some changes to the freeze policy. Um, we haven't quite finished working them out, so I will not include them. Um, there will be an announcement later closer to the freeze with how it will look. And that's pretty much it for the changes to the freeze. Any questions to this part? Mm, no, doesn't look like it. All right, moving on. Some of the changes we'll do. So one of the things we have noticed during regular development cycles is that we suffer from a kind of a problem. You will have some packages in testing that has a new version in unstable. This in itself is not a problem. The problem is sometimes the version unstable has been a different version for a very long time, like a new upstream release. The issue here is the package get out of sync. Developers are working against the unstable version, so that's what they're all working for. <coughs> but if this does not progress into testing, this will not actually be the package we're releasing. So we're doing a lot of work on a package that may or may not actually end up in the release. There's a backlog here that gets stuck. Important changes might get blocked by it because they end up building against the new version and therefore need to wait for the new version to be ready, but the new version is not getting ready for some reason. So this will block migrations. This will have people work on, on the new version. We might discover a security issue in the testing version, which we have no clean way of updating without doing an out-of-band testing proposed updates sort of thing. And that's, that's somewhat an issue for us. It also happens that we are starting a transition and then notice, oops, we got a part of the transition stock behind this <coughs> issue in Unstable that nobody noticed for two months. So the release team looked at this and said, well, our point of view, the primary focus for testing is to create stable. And the primary purpose for Unstable is to create testing. With that in mind, we're considering to remove packages from testing that have been out of sync with Unstable for a long time, namely three months. This will happen even if they have no issues in, unstable, in testing, sorry. They obviously have issues in Unstable if they're stuck in Unstable. Um, the solution for the package maintainer is to fix the problem in Unstable 
and failing that, reverting to the version in testing, um, if there are no other options. There are also some exceptions. We will not be removing the package from testing. That would be counterproductive. We will not remove other key packages. And we will be disabling this during phrases or other long periods where you are not in control of migrations to testing, such as the GCC transition now. So that's the general idea. Of course, once your package is removed, it can still go back automatically as soon as whatever blocked it fi is fixed. So in general, if it's stuck for three months, it probably needs something manually done from your point. Um, so keep in mind, that will be the freeze the 5th of November. If you're removed and didn't fix it before then, your package will be out. Um, so have it fixed before then, and you should be good. We also have a couple of other ideas. Um, we are very close to having auto package tests be bloggers for migrations, thanks to Antonio and Martin. Um, this will be a first step, so at this point they will just block, if you have an auto package test that fail, it will block the migration. We have two years ago a proposal of changing the age delay for packages with auto package tests, that will not come yet. Um, we will look into that later. We're also looking at doing the actual release media for the release ahead of time. So at the last release, um, we had this thing where we, we did the release in two hours. That was all the technical work. And then we started building media, and that took 12 hours. And by the time we were done with that, the press team was asleep. I was ready to fall asleep. Uh, and we still had to fix up the press announcement area, everything else. So that was not really helpful. Um, uh, by the way, it was not the press team's fault being asleep then. Um, we sort of planned to be done earlier, and we weren't, which was unfortunate. So the idea here is to do the, all the release media ahead of time, say a week before, have it ready, be able to do a final testing of it in due time, have a couple of days for it, and then on the actual release day, ship it out. We already have a freeze of seven days up till the release where we don't accept any new changes anyway, unless things are super horribly broken, but we tend to have noticed that by now. Then, as mentioned earlier, we also want to do release candidates or betas during the freeze to have sort of a steady progress and see where we're going and have better release media. We're also looking into improving Britney so some migrations um, happen earlier. This is mostly helpful for transitions where you have what is called out-of-date binaries um, that we don't actually wait for them to be removed from unstable, but just ignore them and migrate anyway. Um, so, and there's a, a couple of other things on the drawing board we didn't quite have ready to announce yet. So, but these are the things we'll be looking at work. Um, finally, I'm moving on to the GCC transition. As you probably noticed, there is such a thing as a GCC transition, which is quite huge. Um, it will take a while, and if you have a library affected by it, please do your part. If you don't have a library, or you have a library but don't know what to do, we have people in a mewing thing, so please be patient and helpful in that regard. Um, and please do not cause interference that might make it longer. Um, there are a lot of packages that are not affected by it, namely DI, for example, is mostly unaffected by it, at least in migration sense. So there are a lot of packages that can be uploaded, um, but if you're in doubt, please use experimental. We would also like to thank Matthias Close for his hard work and con uh, coordination, coordination assistance it would have been a lot more painful without him, so I'd like to give you a hand for Matthias. <laughs> and this is actually where we come to an end. So now you should go forth and fix Box and Jesse.
we do accept important and nasty bug fixes still for that. Uh, there's actually coming a point. We we'll soon be doing a point release. Hopefully, we are looking at the next date for that. Um, there's a procedure in the dev reference 551. Please read that for how to do it if you're in doubt. We're also very happy if people make more QA tools, especially things where you consider doing automatic enforcement, like we have Lynch and AutoReject. We will be having auto package tests soon. So that would be very helpful. Um, if you, in your next QA tool, your next super QA tool, consider this part where we should integrate it into the archive somehow. Also, go forth and reproduce, I mean, make reproducible builds, um, or the other. It's, it seems to get either of that. And please make Stretch a legendary, awesome release. Thank you. At this point, we have 25 minutes for questions. There's a mic there. If people want to come in question, there's also a runner with a mic. Writing system D. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so is the plan to, to block all packages with failing tests like a conscious one to kind of push people to fix their tests, or is that just because we have don't have the ability yet to decide between always failed and an actual regression in the test? Because the latter are what we actually want to to detect and block packages on, but not necessarily if a test has never succeeded, it's just plain broken. So at this point, we will be, for those who don't know, we will basically be fed a little bit of packages with some issues in them. And Brittany does not know why that issue occurs. She's just told, there's an issue, don't migrate it. So at this point, that's actually this how CI Debian.net is implemented that decides this. Eventually, we would like to have what you talk about where we can difference between is my package broken because somebody else broke it or because I uploaded something that's broken. Um, but the current setup that we are, the prototype setup we're doing now will not be able to distinguish that. Right, but that means in CI Debian that we could create a hints file to block this stuff only if the test ever worked. So it was actually a regression. Okay. By all means, if yeah. you can, Thank please you. do. Regarding those new rules for removing packages in testing, yes. if we have those rules, the last stable release, like doing the last stable, how many packages would have been affected? I don't have numbers on that, sorry. Okay. Of course, the uh, extremely Please stand up. Uh, the extremely annoying thing is that if you add auto package uh, tests to your package, you actually have more chance that your package is not migrating. So, uh, is there an incentive in a way? I mean, I add it to all my packages if I can, but currently there is no incentive be incentive beyond you, uh, your own fussy feeling in the stomach of having sort of avoided breakage in testing. As, but as mentioned earlier, we want to go to a state where Brittany is more involved in this and can actually reduce the aging delay. Um, there's an old proposal that's two, two and a half years old, I think, where we said we wanted to integrate auto package tests with Brittany. Um, and the benefit for doing it, if for people having auto package tests, they would have a two-day two migration delay rather than five. But as I said, we're not quite there where we can do that. 
Um, uh, yeah. Um, for for reproducible bills, we're still kind of experimenting a few things. Um, one of the things we have not quite sorted out right now is that we're relying on the um, to the idea was to uh, rely on snapshot.dvn.org to retrieve the uh, build environment and then uh, enable the make the, the build reproducible. Um, some people raised that it would be better if the build environment would be the release, uh, what would be released in the end. And so we were like pondering, oh, should we re rebuild like almost all packages uh, after the freeze? So we get a uh, package built against uh, the package that are likely to be released with, uh, with stretch. There are a few things we need to uh, uh, think about. Maybe later, maybe not stretch, maybe next, one next version, but this is things that uh, we might want to consider. Okay, let me know that now. And as a reply to what's uh, the incentive for you as a package maintainer, uh, okay. Um, if you, uh, once we do the actual reverse dependency testing, then the incentive for you is that if one of your dependencies breaks your package and hence your test, then the dependency won't migrate. So essentially you stop other people in their tracks when they try to break your package. That's the main thing which also helps us with doing transitions and so on. But that's the carrot. So, um, you start talking about um, reproducing packages against stable, uh, against testing, but as far as I know, <coughs> printing doesn't ensure that build dependencies are even available in testing. So we can't often can't even build things in testing against testing and hence in stable against stable. Any plans to change that? Yes, there is. Uh, I have had an interest in doing it. I haven't done it for a while, or haven't done it, certainly. Um, this is part of the things where the freeze here in the soft freeze goes in and helps because at the moment the soft freeze happens things new package is not migrated so you can remove things um, that do not have built dependencies for example and then they stay out um, so at this point is also a very good point for a lot of fail to build from source testing in testing to ensure that built dependencies are present we can certainly also, at this point, migrate new packages to fix that. <coughs> that might be the same thing to do in a particular case. But um, this is the point where we can do and ensure, work on and ensuring testing will be self-contained if I do not make the fix in Brittany yet. Um, somewhat related to the previous question uh, and uh, to Luna's, um, is it maybe time that we start thinking about uh, doing automatic uh, FTBFS uh, tests before migrating to testing, so that that we uh, really only want stuff to go into testing if it's fully buildable uh, at that time? That's a good suggestion. Let me just know that now. There's a question up here. So there's a big push, and again, there's talk, I think, later today about PPAs. Um, have the release team got any thoughts about how PPAs could be useful for um, helping with release work? Yes, um, we do have, it's one of the ideas I didn't announce. We did have an idea for using um, a PPA or an extra suite for s doing transition work in that suite, um, which could assist us in many ways to avoid having breakage in unstable, where we can work isolated in the suite instead, and then move it to unstable when we're done with the worst part of it. Um, I, but the idea is on the drawing boards, and then there is we have some requirements for the one built set up here with building against different suites and so that's not quite fleshed out yet but if we had PBAs that would definitely help there. Um. Um, have you formalized a policy to define what packages can 
would be allowed to have new Upstream versions uh, because I know at least PostgreSQL has ships newer st stable releases during the stable release, so most likely it makes sense to patch them as well during the freeze. And I know that I would like it to be the same for Django, which has insane upstream policy, but we st sort of started this discussion, but I don't know if you made any progress on your side. On and possibly auto package test would be one criteria that could be also helpful here in the carrot side for the <laughs> bef discussion before. Yes. So yes, th we, we do have not quite a full list yet, um, but we did have a talk with the security team and their SRMs about what packages we are currently accepting new upstream releases of during the freeze or after the freeze. Um, usually it's browsers or the Linux kernel. Um, so, but I don't have the list here right, me, right now, but we are working on one. Um, you have a question from the internet, <laughs> from IRC, so I rely on from Sebastik, which says, um, recently the release team member went sort of, on of sort of on vacation and they have not returned to coordinate the GCC5 related transition again. So things are moving a bit slower on, the, on this GCC5 front because your coordination is a bit missing. Uh, when will you come back to it? And because your input is greatly appreciated. I'm uh, sorry, I didn't quite catch the question. <laughs> um, the question is basically, uh, when will you come back more actively on all the related transition uh, connected to GCC5? Because um, it looks like you went a bit on on vacation and thi things are moving more slowly. Because I went on vacation. <laughs> um, now, I, we are, I have had Julian and Jonathan have been doing a lot of work here on the release team side, and Matthias has been working a lot on it. Um, so I have actually not yet been able to uh, catch up with it, but I will after the dev conference ends. I'll have a look at where we are. But I think, I think we our estimation is that we're halfway through, or so. So, we're hoping to be done within two to three months. But we'll see how it actually goes. There's a lot of things that still need to be an unmute, and every unmute takes a couple of days due to the delay and all. So, if you want to help make it faster, please do your uploads yourself or approve of zero day NMUs for it. We also help. Hello. So I have a question about um, auto package tests. Currently, I, I believe that CI Debian Net runs against um, uh, the entirety of Unstable when it run when it's running the tests, and I wonder if it might also be interesting to also try and run this at the time when you've decided you want to migrate a package against the stuff that's trying to go into testing. So testing plus the things you're trying to migrate, so that you can see if, if when you've migrated it, it's still going to continue working at this point. I wonder if that might also be interesting, or maybe be interesting instead. It is interesting, but the problem is you migrate between zero and thousands of packages with each run. Usually, maybe only 20 or so, but still, if you, if you decide, I'm going to migrate 20 packages and then run, you didn't have to wait for 20 auto package tests to complete before you accept it. Um, which, is, which we might be able to do in the 12 hour room that Brittany has, but during sort of the Perl transitions or stuff like that, you end up with a thousand packages that you need to test and all that might be really entangled. I don't know if Martin has a slightly more technical answer as well. Yeah. Well, it's not more technical, it's just looking at it from the angle of executing the tests. And I suppose you, you meant that we don't run the tests against the entirety of Unstable. Not the Britney test, but the actual auto package tests. And that's, I think it's possible in theory. Uh, we could uh, craft like an, auto, uh, an apt pinning file where we, s like we exclude everything from unstable except the 500 packages that we are trying to migrate. It hasn't been done yet, but if there's interest in doing, s uh, if, if someone is interested in doing that, uh, that would be a great contribution because we run into that scenario several times. I'm thinking that each block of transaction, so every time you decide you want to accept a package, then this is a mini transaction, 
and then each of these transactions is then fired off in turn. So one block of auto hints from the easy auto hinter, one like if a package can go in on its own, then you take testing, you add just these packages. So you dominate the old packages out of testing, add these new ones in, and then this is kind of like a mini <coughs> release. It's the state that you're trying to turn testing into now. And then at this point you can run, you can say, is this a valid state for testing? Next time Brittany comes back and runs, you say, have you got the answers to this transition now? Yes or no? Wait or carry on? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I get the point. The issue is here also, if you start doing that, you should also do the fail to build from testing build at the same time, uh, which would be an interesting feature to do. I think it's just a bit hard to start with that. So it might be for the future. Well, I will note it. Any other questions while I write? Could the kids wait after the stretch release? <laughs> I'm not really in control of when people have kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there are not any more questions, I think we'll just end up a bit earlier than expected. Oh, there's one there. So there was a QA both earlier this week, and one of the uh, idea of fly flying around, flying around was that. Uh, we could do automatic removal of orphan packages, probably non-key orphan packages from testing, just to make it easier for people to detect that they are orphan and uh, to adopt them. What do you think about that? I'm not, I don't have any strong opinion, but... Uh, what was the kind of package? Oh, uh, non-key orphan packages. Ah, non-key and orphan packages. Which could be interesting. Um, it just needs a bit of thought with if you remove orphan key packages i suppose that was part of it uh, okay uh, let's take it afterwards i'm not sure i understood what you wanted not so much a question as a comment um i just want to say probably on behalf of lots of people Thank you very much to the release team. We know how massive amount of work you guys put in. It's really appreciated. You are welcome. And you're also welcome to join. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we'll end it here. Thanks for coming.